also I would like to mention that in case you have some questions, uh, please use the chat window, which you can open using the button at the bottom right and write your question there. We will be following uh, the messages there and uh, from time to time stop our presentation and answer the messages as they appear. So actually this uh, seminar will be basically divided into two parts. It should be for one hour. First part will be more, let's say something about the backgrounds and showing some example problems. And the second part, which will be uh, given by my colleague uh, Yiri, who is also joining our uh, line conference. And he will focus more on how uh, this uh, 3D printing modeling, how this is actually done and what in Athena preprocessor and how actually what kind of special commands we have there. So, uh, as you see, this window of 3D printing or this slide of 3D printing, of course, this is a very, let's say, uh, forward seeing idea. We don't make 3D printing in this way currently. A uh, little bit about our company, who doesn't know. So, we are focusing on developing software and technologies for modeling, advanced modeling of uh, concrete structures, uh, reinforced concrete structures. But, uh, so starting from laboratory experiments, that's where our software is very often used. Also modeling the heterogeneity of the material up to some large scale problems, such as these uh, containments, nuclear containments or bridges. But let's say the main focus of Athena was always to model reinforcement detailing. So as you can see on the on, see on some of these other slides in Athena, we can um, uh, model the individual reinforcement and uh, take this into account in Athena model. So when it comes to uh, 3D printing, Many of these ideas that I will be presenting or this uh, technology that has been developed in a project where we, uh, which where we wo work together with uh, Technical University Dresden and Cerion company, the project name was uh, Digicon. And uh, of course, the other partners were mainly involved in the development of the printing machine printing head and the printing uh, material, concrete material, but we were involved in the modeling. And that's what I will be talking about, uh, how we can model this uh, 3D, 3D printing process in Athena. So what we typically do is that we first uh, develop uh, the full 3D model of the building, and then we define the printing path and printing speed. And uh, this means that uh, as the analysis, when the analysis starts, depending on the time, uh, individual finite elements or groups of finite elements are gradually activated uh, to simulate uh, the process of concrete printing. So we define some, uh, so in addition to the 3D model, which we prepare as uh, like in a regular finite element analysis in the preprocessor in Athena, what the main process preprocessor is the program uh, GID. And then in addition to this uh, 3D model, we define a printing path. Then the printing path basically should define, uh, uh, is defined along the uh, kind of a bottom right edge of uh, the walls that are being printed. And the, then the program automatically activates the, the finite elements uh, depending on the time and speed of the printing. Well, of course, in addition to the fact that the elements uh, appear gradually during this uh, printing process, uh, depending on the time, 
also their self weight is then of course activated when the element appears its self weight is also activated and also the shrinkage starts so we define a shrinkage um, uh, law depending on the time so the shrinkage tra strains are introduced and of course uh, the time or the amount of shrinkage is dependent on the age of this element which is the time current time minus the time construction time which means the time when this element uh, was printed well in addition uh, to these let's say loads uh, we also have to take into account that uh, we have a very young material and the material properties will be uh, will be developing in time so again we have for each uh, material parameter we can define uh, this uh, aging function which again takes into account the age of the finite element well for those of you who know uh, athena and uh, know what is the main material model in Athena for concrete. So it is the cementitious, nonlinear cementitious two material. And uh, so this uh, material we are using also for this uh, 3D printing, but uh, the material, individual material parameters are uh, uh, time dependent. So very brief summary, the material model has this kind of or def is defined by this kind of uh, laws so if we see if we look first on the left uh, picture this shows the uniaxial law so in tension it is elastic when tensile strength is reached we have softening in tension in compression we have linear behavior up to certain level when the material starts to be nonlinear, and we have a hardening up to the compressive strength and when the compressive strength is reached, we enter the softening regime, uh, which is linear in this case in compression. Both uh, tensile softening as well as compression softening is based on the fracture or on the crack bed approach, which uh, takes into account the proper energy dissipation in this softening process. If you look at the two dimensional uh, criterion, how it looks in two dimensions, so we have this tension cutoff here on the tensile side uh, part and then we have a some kind of biaxial failure criterion but actually this biaxial failure criterion is basically an intersection of this 3d surface into um, into this uh, 2d into this plane stress configuration or into these uh, two stresses sign, uh, principal stresses uh, so, in, so basically, we have this 3D failure surface from Menetre Villam, uh, which is a three parameter surface defined by three parameters, which are compressive strength, tensile strength, and uh, the parameter E, which defines the roundness of this surface. As you can see, if you make a cut by a deviat deviatoric plane of this surface, you have this kind of um, triangular sh triangular shape with uh, rounded corners and the, how much this surface is rounded is controlled by this parameter e so if we now what i would like to show you is a simulation of one example from the literature it is the paper by wolf uh, from 2018 which is uh, which is an example that we use basically for the validation of this model and uh, I want to demonstrate on this example the parameters that we normally in these uh, 3D printing simulations we make uh, uh, dependent on the age of concrete, on the age of the material. So it is the Young's modulus, tensile strength, compressive strength, the onset of nonlinear behavior in compression, fracture energy. Uh, epsilon CP, which is the compressive displacement at uh, and the compression strength is reached. So this basically controls the ductility of the material in compression. 
and WD is again for softening in uh, compression. So softening in tension is controlled by fracture energy and in uh, compression, we control it by the displacement uh, when the softening goes all the way to zero in compression. Of course, we could use also some fracture energy in tension in compression, but this is, let's say, not such a, uh, so far not a ac generally accepted material parameter, so we prefer to use this WD. So, we need to know these material laws for these materials. So, here we see some values for these material parameters, but maybe better than looking at it in this table, it is more intuitive to look at them in this um, graph, in some graphical way. So, we see how this Young's modulus is developing in time, tensile strength and compressive strength. As you see here, more or less linear relations were defined. And uh, you see that uh, most of these parameters are increasing in time. But for instance, this epsilon CP, which controls the ductility of material in compression, this one is actually decreasing in time. Yes, typically the material usually when it is very fresh, the concrete is very fresh, it is much more ductile than when it starts hardening. So this is the key. So to, to describe the modeling or the strength development or material parameters development uh, in time, uh, we need to provide these laws. Currently in Athena, these laws must be provided because the, the materials that are used for 3D printing currently are very, very different. It is very difficult to define them by some general law. So it is important to know this relationship and this is, let's say, an important input parameter in, in Athena. And sometimes it may be uh, it may be it may be uh, difficult to obtain them. But uh, that, that's, that's the situation nowadays. So, uh, I just want to be clear on this topic. I was just looking whether we have some questions. Uh, Cardo was saying that there may be still some more people joining, waiting and wanted to join, but anyway, we should start. Uh, okay, so let's go next. So, I will show this example. Uh, of this wolf from this wolf paper. So this was basically a cylinder and it was printed until failure. So, and he also performed some analysis to simulate this, uh, this uh, experiment and predict the failure time or height of the specimen when it fails. So I will show some analysis with Athena also of this, uh, this example. And we did axisymmetrical analysis as well as full 3D analysis. So this is what you see. How the this is the shape. This, these are the deformed shapes from the axisymmetric analysis. So as you see, there is basically the, the specimen starts to show this kind of curvature uh, at the bottom. Of course, there it is very sensitive to the boundary conditions at the bottom, whether we fix uh, this uh, bottom edge or whether we allow it to move. Uh, and here you show some, here you see on the right, some results from the 3D analysis. So the collapse in the experiment was at about 29 centimeters. In the analysis, we obtained collapse at about 33 centimeters. Uh, what is also interesting to look at the deformed shape at collapse. So this is the, the black solid line. No, I'm sorry, the, the red line, the dashed red line uh, corresponds to the experiment. Uh, this uh, blue line is from the paper published by Wolf. And then we have uh, 
one of the black line is from the antenna axisymmetric analysis and the yellow line is from the 3D analysis. So as you see the collapse uh, uh, time or the height when the specimen collapsed as well as this deformed shape are let's say much closer at least than in the work published uh, by Wolf. And it is, I think, quite good. Of course, the question is how they, when they took this last deformation, yes, because I can imagine it was quite, um, uh, quite the gradual process of this collapse mechanism. So it was probably, it was never a point when this displacement was, say, fixed, yes. So it was gradually, I, I think, increasing up to the collapse. Well, let me just show one video of this. Uh, so this is, let's say, video from the analysis, very quick one. So you see how the elements, I will maybe stop here and you will notice if you look closely that we, that we actually introduce the elements by kind of chunks, yes? It was not, let's say, by each element, but there is always a, several elements are introduced at the same time. So this can be, of course, controlled in this simulation, the amount of elements that are being introduced at each time. Well, the problem is with uh, these kind of simulations is that uh, it is uh, basically uh, controlled by load. That means at some point, uh, the weight of the structure is, the deformations become so large that the structure starts to collapse. And the load is there, so there is really not a big, not a good possibility how to control this collapse mechanism. So this basically exhibits itself by non-convergence of the solutions and the breaking down of the solutions and total increase or uh, the increase of the deformations. That's because we are using implicit type of analysis. So this, uh, the collapse basically demonstrates that the, 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 the uh, in Athena by non-converging and then non-convergence of the solution. And also the fact by the fact that the deformation starts to dramatically increase. So let me also show uh, one more example. This comes from this uh, Digicon project. Uh, I was mentioning at the beginning, I also noticed that uh, Victor Mecherin is, uh, has joined our webinar today. He was the coordinator of this project on the German side, and they were mainly focusing on the development of the printing machine, printing material. And uh, the, I, the, the goal at this project was to print this kind of building. This may be, I want to make a small note here. It may be surprising to you to see this kind of uh, structure with uh, sharp corners. Of course, when we make uh, 3D printing of concrete, typically we have rounded uh, structures. That's what, that's what we will also show you in the example later on in this webinar by my colleague uh, Yiri. But the goal of this project was to actually develop a printing head that can print sharp corners. That's why we are also uh, have, that's we are, have this example with the sharp uh, corners. So you see the gradual printing, so far nothing is happening. Uh, the and then, of course, depending on the printing speed and the type of material that you are using, you may observe a collapse, which in this situation for this given speed op was obtained at the height of uh, about uh, one meter. So you see this longest wall started, well, maybe I should go back. So you, we started to, to see the collapse of this wall. And of course, if you control the, so this collapse was at about 90 centimeters, 
but if we reduce the speed of printing, of course, we can obtain a structure which is not collapsing. So this was, let's say, the example from this uh, Digicon project. And uh, uh, so some, maybe a look at the results, a little bit more detail. The idea there was, of course, to have a IFC import of some IFC uh, BIM data, which is now uh, will be available. This is a slide of a new version of Athena. Maybe I can show it here also, which we are now developing, which uh, supports more this new BIM model and also is then able to import IFC data, for instance, for, for, for 3D printing, or, but also for other types of structures and other types of modeling. Uh, here we see this collapse uh, of this wall. You see the cut here and the deform shape uh, when the wall started to collapse. If you look at the deformed shape, you also see here the fact that, of course, the, the, the wall is deforming, but we are always trying to print at the original def def original configuration, which is, of course, uh, again, uh, causing more eccentricity of the load and uh, increasing the probability of uh, failure of the wall. So the idea of Athena to model 3D printing of structure is, of course, there are two objectives. One is that we can model the printing process, and uh, this may help to optimizing the printing speed so that the structure does not collapse, or also the printing path. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we can uh, take into account the process of the construction, which creates some, some in, uh, initial stresses in, in our structure or uh, shrinkage due to, of course, the construction process itself and also maybe due to differential shrinkage of the material. And this, uh, the fact of these initial stresses in our structure, of course, may have an impact on the structural st stability or on the stability of the final structure. Of course, nowadays, uh, the structures that we are printing are rather simple and maybe not really a the, the stress analysis or, or the static of these buildings is not a problem, but we are trying to look a little bit into the future when uh, probably even some uh, more complex structures will be, will be built by printing, by printing process. And then it will be important also to consider this uh, construction process in the safety checks and reliability checks of the final configuration of the structure or during its the service life of the structure. Uh, well, of course, another it is interesting to see that the many, uh, most of the times when you make these uh, analysis of the structures uh, in this by this three, uh, created by this uh, 3D printing, we observe that really the main problem is the stability uh, for the collapse during the printing. And again, it was demonstrated also in this example. If we look, if we look, uh, or if we plot, this uh, graph is plotting the development or of the uh, compressive strength of the material, which is this, uh, this uh, uh, orange line. And uh, the blue line is, are the highest principal stresses that we, not principal stresses, but the highest stresses in the vertical direction that we observe in our structure. And it was actually interesting to see that uh, at the point of collapse, we have actually, we start to see that this is the point when our compressive stresses in the structure are reaching the uh, compressive uh, strength. I have a request here, Wilson, you are trying to say something? 
have a request from you that you want to make some note on my screen. Uh, no, I'm just missing. What's the point of the the gray curve in the chart? Uh, gray curve. Uh, I forgot myself. <laughs> uh, you have the orange one being the evolution of compressive strength. Yes, <laughs> I think. Uh, I think the if I remember correctly, unfortunately, the label is missing here. But if I remember correctly, the gray one corresponds to stresses that you would expect just from the uh, from the load, like from the vertical load, like from the from the dead load of the structure. Okay. So we know that there we have a certain weight, a certain height of the wall, and this should create a theoretical stress of certain level. But because we have some uh, stress concentrations there and we have some uh, shrinkage development, uh, the, the real stress in the structure is a little bit higher. And also because of the bending due to the, due to the, um, to the curvature of the wall, the compressive stress is a little bit higher. So is it clear now? Thank you. Uh, so it was interesting that at this analysis, we starting to have the combination of the two failures. First is the buckling or the loss of stability, but also we start to see that the compressive stresses are reaching uh, the compression strength of the material at these bottom layers, which were printed first. Uh, it was also interesting to see if you just make a simple hand calculations, you observe a very similar collapse <laughs> height, just from stability assumptions. All right, uh, so this is just some conclusions from this first uh, part of uh, our presentation today. Uh, so we have added this uh, this uh, new feature in Athena, it is available in the latest version of Athena 5.9 that we have released uh, this fall. But of course, we are continually, continually, we are continue to improve that. Some of the latest improvements, maybe uh, are, uh, maybe my colleague will mention that also, but maybe I should mention them also now, is uh, uh, for instance, the fact that you can, rather than defining the path by some uh, Excel file, which is the current state in Athena, we have we are we have already implemented, and now we are transferring it into the commercial version. The possibility that you take that you uh, as an input for the printing path, you directly take the G code, the G code that you use in your printing machine. So this simplifies uh, very much uh, this uh, definition. All right, so I think uh, maybe are there any questions for this first part? So either write them into the chat window, but you can also maybe directly unmute your microphone and ask if you like. If not, uh, I will ask my uh, colleague, uh, Yeshi. Yeshi, are you there? Yes, I'm here, I'm following. So I will stop sharing my screen and if you share yours. So I hope you can all see my, my screen and I will start the presentation. Which like this, uh, yeah, yes, so, can see it. so, yeah. so also good morning for me, or um, morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are right now. So, I will focus mainly on like more practical aspects of the, of the 3D printing modeling in using Athena. Um, there are like two different things which you need to take care of while during during such a simulation first one is the definition of material properties and second one is the is the definition of the whole printing process and i will be uh, showing or 
explaining on this example, which is some kind of like a waffle wall or uh, honeycomb wall with internal stiffening. Maybe I can I can actually run this calculation now. Uh, so later on we can look at it. So here I have the model already 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 prepared, and I will run the solution in Athena Studio. Uh, yeah, maybe one thing to to note that this all 3D modeling is only available using Athena Science. It's not a feature of engineering. So now we can see how the structure is gradually uh, being painted. Uh, like the elements on the on the printing printing path are gradually activated. So back to the back to the presentation now. We will let's and this will be calculating me meanwhile. So, so first of all the definition of the of, of the material. As was mentioned previously, we have this uh, time-dependent material model implemented in Athena. It's called cementitious two variable, and it allows for definition of uh, time development of uh, all the all the material properties which change uh, during the hardening of concrete. Uh, it should be noted that the time zero when when the element is 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 activated in the model corresponds to the zero at the time function uh, defined in this in this material. Then about the definition of the printing process. So first of all, uh, you should tell the preprocessor that, or tell uh, tell the preprocessor that you will be uh, preparing your model for digital printing. So in the global options, you activate this option use Digicon, like digital concrete uh, analysis of uh, in in Athena. Then um, in the in then another thing which should be taken care of is the interval uh, settings definition, where uh, normally uh, this yeah maybe I should mention at the beginning that this is done in the static module of. Of, of Athena, where you normally don't have a relationship between the computational time step and the time. However, for the analysis of 3D printing, you need to define this one. And this is done in the uh, interval setting. When you, if you activate the Digicon settings here, a new uh, new tab pops out, and in in that tab you can define how long each computational step takes. In terms of in terms of time, or you can define like the, the, the first step is different uh, if you if you need it for some reasons in your analysis. Also, uh, to to um, to be uh, to be sure that the self plate is uh, or shrinkage is uh, activated correctly, you should use this activate step multiplier and set it to one. After that, you can add another interval. For example, after you finish the 3D painting, you want to conduct a load test to see how uh, how much uh, load your 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 structure can carry after the 3D painting or after some time of hardening. So uh, after that, in the new interval, you will uncheck this Digicon settings and use it uh, as you normally do. Uh, while doing static Athena analysis. Next, uh, an important thing is to define the details of the construction process, mainly the details about the, the about the painting trajectory or the or about the time when the elements are activated. For this, there are currently two options. Either you can directly specify the time when the element is activating by uh, explicitly defining the construction time. Uh, for this, uh, I mean, this option is available uh, when you go to data, materials, and uh, and open the, the, the Digicon tags. 
then this kind of windows close up this kind of window actually and you can either choose by defining directly the constant time or by 3d printing parameter if you if you know when some 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 part of the structure is placed once you choose the construction time this is uh, this is useful for example if you uh, print some this kind of this kind of house house like structure which was so previously and you have the lintels there uh, you know exactly when they will be placed they are not 3d printed they will be placed there by some 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 crane or manually so you directly set this time or this, this can be used for some reinforcement etc if you decide to use the 3d print i mean in, in for for the printing process you will probably uh, tend to use the 3d printing parameters uh, for this you need to define this kind of this kind of window uh, with uh, 3d printing parameters label and set the set the set the information about the width of the printing layer about its height about the the, the velocity and about the trajectory uh, where the printing head goes. Uh, this this uh, this uh, printing trajectory is currently inputted in form of a, of a CSV file, where the nodes on the printing uh, head trajectory are directly specified. Their coordinates are directly specified. You should you should be careful to to set the printing has trajectory along the bottom right edge of the elements at the first printed layer. So if I have the structure like this, this direction goes the height, I go on the bottom right corner of the first printed layer. It should be noted that uh, if the trajectory goes along a straight path, you don't need to select each of these nodes. You can just select the, 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 the one at the beginning and then one at the end. However, if I have some curved trajectory, it is better to define all the elements along the path. At this moment, uh, only the option that you select the nodes along the right bottom edge is available. However, uh, in the in next versions of Athena, you, it, it should be either possible to use the g-code or the nodes for example in the center of the printed layer so uh, and also we we will in, we plan to implement some 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 more intuitive features how to select this printing path currently it should be done either in a in a notepad or you can use excel or some other program to to, to define these nodes Uh, this this uh, this file is then 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 you specify the name of the file and it should be placed in the folder with the GID mo G GID GID model, not in the in the Athena calculation folder, which is which is which is uh, which is also there, but about one one uh, one uh, folder above it. Uh, then you need to specify the printing direction. It, I mean, the, this is the direction of the height of the of, of the printing structure, and you can use uh, some other options such as printing time to, uh, to, to 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 define different beginning time for all the elements, or some uh, or define some uh, some time between uh, between each layers to account for like some construction delays or when the crane goes from well, from the end to the beginning uh, to the beginning of the of the printing track uh, and there are also some advanced features for optimizing the the the, the, the printing trajectory maybe one important thing is where to find more more information about this so one thing which you should look at is the uh, Athena GID user uh, manual where there is a chapter about your 3d concrete painting 
and also the uh, the, the uh, if you install Athena, there will be some examples copied to your to to to, to your computer. Uh, and currently there are there are three of them. We you, you, you can check some uh, some house which is similar to the to the one painted at U Dresden. And the, this kind of like a, a honeycomb warp, and then there is one example of the input file which is which uses slightly different commands than the than the uh, GID preprocessor. However, it's uh, you can use it as um, inspiration if you uh, if you want to do some more advanced modeling. So that will be it from the from the slides and uh, and actually those are these three, three three examples which you can find in your installation. Uh, these three structures you can you can model. Uh, so. Thank you for your attention for now, and uh, let's see how the printing goes in the, how the solution goes, how far we get if the structure is already collapsing or not. Uh, so the analysis is still 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 ongoing. Uh, now we can see that we are um, we are approximately in the height of of uh, 0 0.3 meters, and the elements are still still still, um, still we don't see any any um, like different shape. If we have the, the the deformation set to one, maybe if we little bit use a little bit higher higher scale for the deformation. Maybe this is too high. We can see that already some buckling uh, appears on the walls. Maybe I can uh, I can show a model where I already already uh, already computed this one in advance. So we can see the final step. The analysis, because uh, this model actually uh, actually the printing the the printing speed and the material behavior are set in such a way that the statue will collapse. Uh, we will not build it. Uh, we will not print it uh, to, the, to the to the to the complete uh, complete height, the entire height. Uh, however, at some point the, the the wall start to buckle, as you can see in here, uh, due to the due to the self weight, and uh, cracks will develop in the material. And uh, actually, at, at the last step, the, the solution stop stop uh, stop converging, and then you get an error that that and see very uh, very very. Uh, how to say, uh, like weird or uh, weird different shape, and which which suggests that the structure is uh, falling down. Maybe I can uh, open this model also in the GID preprocessor. Here, here you can see that the height was was meant to be much higher. So this is like two meters the height, and uh, five centimeters, as you can see. Here are the dimensions, uh, is, it, uh, is the thickness of the wall and also the thickness of the, of the internal stiffener. And we see in here. So, uh, so for this material, for this, for this model, my, my material is called my, my hardening concrete, which if I open here, you can see that is the is the nonlinear cementitious two variable material, and here are the relationship for the for the material characteristics for the for the compressive and tensile strength for the elastic modulus, and in 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 the uh, next steps, it's for example for the fraction energy energy etc. 
uh, as I mentioned, that uh, in the global options problem data, you have to check this use Digicom settings. That's uh, so, so. So this is the material and uh, the definition uh, or the specification of the digital di or activation of the digi uh, digital painting in GID. And in here, materials and Digicom tags. Uh, you can see that I'm using this uh, 3D printing parameters, and uh, I also uh, uh, choose the, the the material name corresponding to the name of the material which is defined here. Then in the 3D printing parameters, uh, I set the the thickness of the the painting layer. You can see here this is five centimeters, which corresponds to the to the inputs in this window. Uh, also, I set some time which which accounts for the delay between between each layer. And uh, about this file, the digi CSV, this this is where I specify the the, the painting tag. It's placed this folder with my model. It's Anicom wall 3D printing, uh, and I use specific elements for this modeling. And here I have the digi. CSV. If I open it, I can see the I can see the coordinates of of the nodes. Maybe I can. I still have maybe four minutes before we get to the question and answers section, so I can I can talk more in detail about this one. So how to how to efficiently uh, select the, or, or get the coordinates of this or, or of these nodes. So I have my model, and after meshing it, so I will mesh the structure, and I can see nice virtual mesh on the on the, on the structure. And now I'm 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 uh, I'm uh, focusing how to get the coordinates of the nodes along this pattern bottom edge of the first layer. So probably these two points will be quite easy. Also the, the, the other points along the outer outer edge, outer wall of the structure will be easy to get. But maybe this kind of the stiffener is not so not so easy to obtain. So one method how to do this is that at this state when I have mesh of the model I will use this feature in GID where I can select the nodes and I will select the nodes along, along this along this uh, bottom edge of the structure and then get the list of them. Here, here you can see that, uh, that, that, that GID gives me the number of the node and its coordinates. Then I can uh, directly copy this list into some into some Excel file or Notepad. Uh, I should be sometimes GID is not very uh, doesn't select the notes according to the uh, in the order which I selected them, um, but uh, in different order. So I should I should check that uh, the that the order corresponds to the uh, order <coughs> of, of, of Response to the um, 3D printing track or the trajectory of the or, or which is being printed. So, uh, so once this one is uh, once I set the settings in the uh, in the in here in Digicon text, I have this window ready. I can uh, check the interval settings. Which again is uh, here. I should be careful about uh, checking the digital settings option. And here you can see that one computation steps equals to 45 seconds 
uh, of the printing time. So in total, I uh, I have uh, I, I have 300 multiplied by 45 uh, seconds. That will be the total printing time. So I guess we are reaching to the end of today's webinar. Uh, so maybe it's time for the questions and answers. Yes, uh, so are there any questions? So either use your chat or I think you can also unmute your microphone and ask the question. We are not so many of us here, so we, uh, it's possible to, if you have a question, they'll just speak up. All right, Wilson here again. Athena program produced by Chervenka company you can find us via the website and download the program from it or on YouTube by name Chervenka Consulting or in Facebook by name Athena. Finally, we thank you for your attention and for any inquiries, please don't hesitate to contact us. Have a nice day. Bye bye.